20 mistakes to avoid on your trip to California. I'm Chris and I'm joined by special guest Josh from the YouTube channel California Through My Lens. He is the foremost expert on California that I know. I think I have to fight you for that though, right? <laughs> all right, we can arm wrestle later. Yeah. So Josh, what do you think is the number one mistake people make when they come to California? Yeah, I'd say the number one mistake by far is that people try to do too much when they're visiting the state. I mean, it's like 14 hours from the southern portion all the way to the northern portion, just driving without stopping. So trying to see like too much is is crazy I would recommend you focus on an area so maybe you do a trip to Northern California for a week do a trip to Southern California for a week and see LA Joshua Tree all these great stuff but that way you're not trying to just drive all over the state and see everything in one trip yeah that's a that's a great tip Josh because I think so many people spend so much of their time just driving in their cars and not actually seeing the state and by the way we're recording this video in Huntington Beach Surf City USA where we're also doing a vlog for Josh's channel so you can check that out a little bit later to see more of HB but you're gonna see some as we shoot this video as well the second mistake speaking of beaches that I think people make when they come to California is they think the beach is warm during spring break April May March. If you come during spring break, it's really going to be cold. The water's going to be cold. You're going to need a wetsuit if you go in the water. And in the morning, it's going to be cloudy. We have this thing called May Gray that even extends to June gloom. Josh, have you ever come to the beach and found no sun and cold waters? Oh, yeah, all the time. I was going to say, I don't think I've been in the water in like a decade. I mean, like when you're younger, it's the greatest thing ever, yeah. but the water's cold here. It is, it is chilly. Yeah. yeah. So prepare to have a little bit of brrrr <laughs> when you come to the beach. Another, be another mistake people make about temperature is visiting Death Valley in the summer. You know, it's called Death Valley for a reason, Josh. <laughs> yeah, it gets really hot there. It's one of the hottest places in North America. A couple years ago, it was like 128 degrees. If you want to visit Death Valley in the summer, just go turn on your oven, open up the door. You can get a little close to it. That's kind of what it feels like to visit Death Valley. Yeah, it's actually really nice in the winter, but people think, I want to go there in summer because I want to experience the world record heat. Trust me, you don't. That's when your tires melt, and that is when people <laughs> not die. Worth it. Yeah, it is not worth it. <laughs> the fourth mistake people make when coming to California is they go to San Francisco and they don't bring warm weather clothes. San Francisco is cold pretty much all year round. Maybe not all day, all the time, but if you're there for a week, chances are good five days of that week you're gonna be cold because of the fog, the pea soup fog in San Francisco. Yeah, there's been many times where I've like planned a trip somewhere in California and I don't even check the weather. And then I get there and it's freezing and I have to buy a sweatshirt. I have lots of sweatshirts I've had to buy from all over. California can get cold as well, so prepare for that. The fifth common mistake people make coming to California is referring to San Francisco as San Fran. Don't do it. It's San Francisco, it's SF, it's not San Fran, and it's definitely not Frisco. How do I know this? I made a travel guide on San Francisco, and in the thumbnail, I put San Fran, because I thought that would be kind of cute. And you know what, everybody from San Francisco was like, Chris, it's not San Fran. And I'm like, it was, it was the short in the thumbnail. Don't do it, don't do it. Josh, what else should people not do when they come <laughs> the, to California? The next mistake is that people need to book in advance for basically everything that you're gonna do. It used to be back in the day that you could show up and you could get a campsite, no problem. But now you gotta book it six months in advance. You gotta get on at 6 a.m. and be refreshing the page in order to get the busiest campsites. Plus you need to get a reservation to go into Yosemite National Park in the summertime. So anything you think you wanna do, be sure to research how to best do those before you come. Yeah, and even Disneyland, you know, people used to turn up at Disneyland at the gate and buy tickets, but now you need a park reservation to visit Disneyland. Even once you bought the ticket, you need to make sure you have a reservation for the specific park for the certain day. So definitely a good California vacation is a planned California <laughs> vacation. Got a lot of surfers behind me for the next one, and that is not budgeting enough money for your trip. California is an expensive place. Everything you've heard about it is probably true. The gas is one of the most expensive in the nation here. We have a lot of tourist cities, so they can be really expensive with resort fees and with hotel fees. So budget more money than you think you're probably gonna need. Yes, yeah, I, I had to go to the ATM and, and get more money. <laughs> the parking in Huntington Beach was, was more than I thought. The next mistake people make when they come to California is they go down to Tijuana in Mexico, just south of San Diego, and they forget their passport. Because you can leave San Diego and walk into Tijuana, Mexico without your passport. They will happily accept you into Mexico just walking across. But you know what, in the United States of America, they're gonna check your passport coming back in here. So if you do wanna visit Mexico on your trip to California, make sure you have a passport, even if you're going across that land border. 
Luckily, I haven't made that mistake before. <laughs> All right, good. That's why you're here. Yeah. So we moved up from the surfers to the pinwheels for the next spot, and that is that you need to plan more time than you think you're gonna need for all the driving that you do in California, especially when you're in LA or San Francisco around rush hour, traffic can basically be a standstill. It can take you 30 minutes to go one or two miles. Yeah, and I, my advice to you would be a lot of people when they plan their drive times, they just use Google Maps and most people plan their next day like at 10 at night and so you're gonna see the traffic at 10 at night, which isn't that bad. Use the features in Google Maps of depart at or arrive by. You can like check these little boxes and say depart at 5 p.m. or arrive by 7 p.m. and then you'll find out it doesn't actually take one hour, it actually takes three when you're going at traffic time. The other mistake you shouldn't make when you come to California is driving slow in the carpool lane. So on all of the big interstate freeways here, the leftmost lane or lanes is generally the carpool lane. There's diamonds on it, and that means you gotta have two or three people in your car, or on some freeways you gotta pay to get in it. But that lane is supposed to be the fastest lane on the freeway. Don't park it at 65 miles per hour just because that's the speed limit, right? What do you say people often do? I don't mean you, Josh, but what do other people I often do I can confirm that, that happens all the time. People yeah. just drive slow and you can't yeah. get around them because you can't leave the carpool lane. That, that's right, that's right. <laughs> so don't do it because the person's gonna be behind you, yeah, and you can't get in and you can't get out and then you're just gonna have a whole bunch of people that are like three inches from your bumper behind. And I don't want that for you. <laughs> All right, our next mistake is thinking that the train is the fastest way to get around. I know if you came from like a European country or something, you're used to just taking the train. Unfortunately, our train in California is very pretty, but not super efficient. You can take it to get to some of the coastal beach cities, but you can't even take a route from LA to San Francisco that's direct. Yeah, really definitely consider the train a scenic route and not the quick route. Uh, the one that's most popular for tourists is Los Angeles to San Diego because it does pick up in downtown LA and it does drop off right in downtown San Diego, so you can consider that route. Mistake number 12 is not using the subway. Los Angeles and San Francisco both have underground trains. Bay Area Rapid Transit in San Francisco and in LA, it's the subway. It runs from downtown LA through Hollywood up to Universal Studios. And I've been in downtown Los Angeles and I asked someone who walked out of a building because they were working there, hey, can you tell me where the entrance to the subway is? And you know what, Josh, they just looked at me like, I was we have a subway? <laughs> exactly, we have a subway. Yeah, and it doesn't go to the airport either, so do know that about LA, but in San Francisco, it's very easy to get from the, the airport all the way into downtown. Yeah, great point. Speaking of airports, mistake number 13 is thinking that Los Angeles and San Francisco are the only two airports in California. There are so many more airports in California that may be so much closer to your destinations. San Diego has its own airport. You don't need to fly into Los Angeles to go to San Diego. Just like 30 miles to the south of Los Angeles International Airport is John Wayne Orange County Airport, SNA. That's the one you wanna fly into if you're going to Disneyland, it's the closest. And if you're going to San Francisco, cause SFO is foggy all the time, you might wanna consider Oakland just on the other side of the bay. Flights are even a little bit cheaper too, and they're much more on time. Yeah, I use all the airports because you can always try to find something that's cheaper, which is awesome. In California, I have so many airports. Next up, don't miss out on the national parks. We have some of the best national parks in the entire country right here in California. To me, Yosemite is the best national park in the entire country, but there's eight others. There's nine total national parks and every trip to California should touch on a few of them. Yeah, and I'll say, you know, as someone who grew up in California, I haven't even been to all of the national parks. But you it, haven't. I've not been to all oh of them yet. Gosh, yeah, you I need to. Do it. We're right. gonna stop this video right now. <laughs> that's go that's it. Throw me off the <laughs> throw me off the pier. Um, but in Southern California, I really like, in addition to Death, Death Valley, uh, I like Joshua Tree as well. It just has these like kind of like moon-like trees that are there. Um, but Josh, if people are going to like a few different national parks, is there like something they should do to help it be cheaper? Is there a combo ticket they can buy or what? Yeah, to piggyback on that, our next mistake is not buying an annual pass. If you are going to more than two, then you should definitely buy an annual pass. It's about $30 per car to enter Yosemite or Joshua Tree, and it's $80 for a national park pass that lasts for the entire year. You can go to all the national parks in the United States. So if you're gonna do it, it's probably the best way to do it. If you buy the national parks pass, do you still need a reservation to get into the park? Or uh, yes, you do. You do have to, so for Yosemite in the summer, you yep. have to have a reservation even if you have a pass uh, just because it gets so busy. Mistake number 16 is going to a snow area without tire chains. In California, if you're going to the mountains in snow season, you need to have tire chains on your tires 
if there's snow, but Josh, you go to a lot of snowy areas. Do you carry tire chains I with you? I always have them with me because a few times I've been in Yosemite, I've been worried that it, like it's gonna snow and I won't have them and they'll kick me out yeah. or whatever. So they're always in my car uh, in the winter time, not in the summer. Yeah, do you put them on yourself? I will, I, I can. Yeah. Um, it takes me a little bit of time always to figure it out, but I can put them on myself. Yeah. So, so if you have a <laughs> rental car and you're like, you're like, how do I get tire chains? You can go places to buy tire chains. And if you can't put tire chains on in the snow areas, there are people that will put tire chains on your cars at the big and busy ones. We once were in Lake Tahoe and we had a rental car and, That's we, nice. and we didn't have chains and it snowed when we were there. And so like eight feet of snow. And so we went, like the hotel actually Pro sold tire chains didn't know that. Yeah, and put them on our car. <laughs> so there you go. And then when you get to the bottom of the mountain, how do you take them off? Same thing. We paid somebody at the bottom of the mountain in the chain area to like take you off. You don't just leave them on the whole time you're driving? <laughs> yeah, right. Just leave them <laughs> so right. No, that's a good point, right? Because like in many other places of the world, you might get um, winter tires or snow tires that you do leave on all the time. But snow chains, you just put on when it's snowy and when you're on the mountain. Our next, our, well, I want to say that we're in front of the world's largest surfboard too, in case you're wondering what that was. But our next mistake is not eating at In-N-Out Burger. I know you've probably heard that In-N-Out is overrated from some person who went to California, but quintessential California is a visit to In-N-Out. If you come into LA, my favorite one is the one next to the airport. It's Definitely. always busy. I love that one. But you get to see all the airplanes. And then I get a number one, which is a double-double animal style. What about you? All right. I also get a double-double, but I get it with uh, extra lettuce, extra tomato, and extra spread. That's what I get on it. Who and does extra lettuce? Yeah, I do. I do extra <laughs> lettuce. I must be like a bunny rabbit. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then uh, the other tidbit on this surfboard is actually, this has the world's record for the world's largest surfboard that surfed. 40 plus people were on this thing, surfing for 12 seconds. We watched the video in the International Surfing Museum that's right here. Uh, now, speaking of like cool worldly things, another mistake people make coming to California is they go to Hollywood Boulevard thinking they're going to see movie stars. And uh, let me tell you, the only stars you're going to see in Hollywood are the ones that are in the sidewalk, but not the real ones. One time though, I was hiking in Runyon Canyon and I did see Gerard Butler. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. but I've been to Hollywood like 700 times and I've only had one celebrity yeah. sighting, so there you go. Runyon Canyon, that's the hike up to the Hollywood sign, Yeah, right? well like in that area, yeah. that downtown area. Right, right. Anyway, you'll see them around, but Hollywood Boulevard is probably the one street that you won't see them on. Very anticlimactic if you're visiting California. Mistake number 19 is just going to the major areas of California. Of course, LA and San Francisco and San Diego are amazing places that are well worth exploring but getting outside of those places just a little bit will show you some true California some places that maybe the tourists don't go that you'll really love example of that being even going to Napa is amazing you should go to Napa but go to Sonoma you know you could go to Paso Robles if you're in the Central Valley you go to Temecula if you're in Southern California all of these places have great wine as well and so just trying to see those types of things while you're in California. Yeah for sure and I feel like the things you see on like the top level tourism stuff about California are the things people are trying to sell you. They're trying to sell you the Hollywood Boulevard tour <laughs> of the stars but you know one of the best tours you can take if you're in Central California is of the almond blossoms. I, I mean most people don't even know California has a whole almond blossom season and they're just as beautiful as the cherry blossoms but you wouldn't know because there's <laughs> nobody selling tours of the almond blossoms so it doesn't make people a lot of money um, but it's really beautiful so check those little I haven't been out. to the almond blossoms but I'm gonna have to go yeah, now. Yeah Josh is gonna have to go now right uh, we did a video series there <laughs> last summer and it was super awesome. Which well, you can click here and watch Chris's <laughs> almond video. A video of that right <laughs> and so speaking of clicking places the final mistake people make number 20 coming to california is not watching more of josh's excellent videos on his channel <laughs> california through my lens over oh, 400 yeah, videos on california you'll find that link on the screen in the description below you'll also find a video that josh and i did this day the vlog about huntington beach hiking this place bolsa chica so you can watch that if you want to see more of the two and of i us. would also say that you got to watch chris's videos because in terms of sheer information no one does it better you're not going to find the cinematic drone shots maybe but you will definitely know how to experience the place the best way you possibly can if you watch his videos. All right. Well, fellow explorers, as usual, we won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next video.